Glad to be back with you again. This is week two of our children's sermons. Today, our children's sermon is focused on a passage from 2 Samuel. But I today will be reading from you from the message, a different translation that'll make me help you better understand this story. Let us hear the word of the Lord. It was reported to King David that God had prospered Obed and Edom and his entire household because of the chest of God. So David thought, I'll get that blessing for myself and went up and brought the chest of God from the house of Obed and Edom to the city of David, celebrating extravagantly all the way. With frequent sacrifices of choice bowls, David ceremonially dressed in priest's linens and danced with great abandon before God. The whole country was with him as he accompanied the chest of God with shouts and trumpet blast. But as the chest of God came into the city of David, Michelle, Saul's daughter, happened to be looking out a window. When she saw King David leaping and dancing before God, her heart filled with scorn. They brought the chest of God and set it in the middle of the tent pavilion that David had pitched for it. Then and there, David worshipped, offering burnt offerings and peace offerings. When David had completed the sacrifices of burnt and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the God of the angel armies and handed out each person in the crowd, men and women alike, a loaf of bread, a date cake, and a raisin cake. Then everyone went home. David returned home to bless his own family. Michal, Saul's daughter, came out to greet him. How wonderfully the king has distinguished himself today, exposing himself to the eyes of the servants like some burlesque street dancer. But David replied to Michal, in God's presence, I'll dance all I want. He chose me over your father and the rest of your family and made me prince over God's people, over Israel. Oh, yes, I'll dance to God's glory more recklessly even than this. And as far as I'm concerned, I'll gladly look like a fool. But among these maids you're so worried about, I'll be honored to no end. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have here a picture of different types of shoes that may or may not be familiar to you. These shoes I have seen in my own household because they are all types of dancing shoes. And as you know, my daughter Kylie is a dancer. Ballet dancers have special slippers like this. They are flexible and easy to move so that you can dance more gracefully. On the other extreme, there are things like tap shoes, which are designed to make noise when you move. And then there are other types of shoes like point, which are for very advanced ballet, and jazz, which are for jazz music, and even hip hop shoes, if that's the kind of dancing you're into. Whatever style of dance, there's a perfect shoe. You know, when I was young, I went to a very strict private Christian school that did not allow dancing. They believed it was wrong. And it makes sense that they might come to that conclusion since there are very few passages in the Bible about dancing. But there is one involving one of the most famous men in the Bible, King David. David had just become the king of Israel. And after many years of running and hiding from the former King Saul, whose daughter he married, he was a long way from the boy who had killed Goliath. He was a grown man, a married man, the most powerful man in Israel. So why was King David dancing? because he was praising God. David had decided to bring the Ark of the Covenant, the most sacred treasure chest in all of Israel, to the capital city of Jerusalem. This was an occasion for worship and celebration, and David was front and center leading that worship. The Bible tells us 
He was almost half naked dancing and singing and praising the Lord. Can you imagine the president, the mayor of our town, or even me leading a parade and dancing at like David did? It seems a little undignified, doesn't it? These are people who are supposed to be professional, mature, and serious. Unless you're me, which you know I'm not serious all the time. People in power don't dance half naked down a street, or do they? That's exactly what David's wife, Machel, said when he went home that day. She yelled at him. You're not supposed to be dancing and praising God. She told him straight out, you made a fool of yourself. But do you know what David said to her? He told her he didn't care. He danced for one person and one person only. And that was the Lord. In fact, he told his wife, I will become even more undignified than this. David loved God more than anyone. He cared what God thought more than what his wife or anyone else thought. Believe it or not, I also challenged that school's policy and danced along to a song that my group made up for a project. Our group received the same response David did and shared this exact example in the Bible to defend ourselves. We shared that we were dancing for the Lord and that was our purpose. That's a challenge for all of us, isn't it? Whose opinion matters the most to you should be Jesus's. Don't be afraid to be who God created you to be and praise the Lord in the ways that you feel matters to Jesus. Maybe you won't be dancing, but God can be praised in many ways. What ways can you praise the Lord whose opinion matters most?